Welcome to Dark Sorcery. I'm Alfredo Martinez, and I have with me Jesse James Ardia. Good to have you on. Thank you. You're welcome. And so from what I understand, you're into uh, herbs and potions mostly. Is that right? Yes, very much. Mm -hmm. Now, how did, go ahead and tell us, how did your uh, magical journey begin? Okay. Um, as far back as I can remember, as a little girl, it started from there. Um, I would have very fascinating dreams, premonitions that always came true. Um, it was actually my mother that very much inspired me. She was extremely spiritual. And uh, there were certain oddities that she did that had me fascinated. So I would say... I can remember at eight. Okay. The journey started from there and then it just took off. Okay. What things would you say that she did that inspired you? Um, as I said, she was a very spiritual woman mm -hmm. and uh, she would do odd different things and she would have some women over that were very spiritual, they were very healing. Okay. So they would, you know, if there was a problem, they would heal each other. And it was just the way they went about it. My mother was extremely superstitious. So when she started bringing out <laughs> the oil and the water and the pins, <laughs> yeah, I knew, I knew, okay, you say you're this, but it was very different practice than what she was portraying to other people and I was just a little girl and I watched in awe I was I have were four girls and I was the only one who was totally fascinated with everything that they were doing the healing the herbs uh the beliefs I mean I would wake up from my dreams or if I had premonitions and I had no idea she would pull out this dream book, no idea where she got it from. So she would start flipping the pages and, uh, oh, it means this, it means that. Later to inspire me, I was probably 11 or 12 when I brought my first dream book. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, she had her way, but I would say I have taken it to a whole different higher level than she than she did or could at the time because you understand that some of this stuff wasn't talked about and shown to other people you know right so would you say that a lot of the magic and spiritualism that you know and practice you learned from your mother not a lot of it but I think that's where the start was. And then in my teens, I met a very wonderful woman. And then from her, it was just like, um, it just ricocheted. From her, I met somebody else. And you know, when you're ready for something, the universe opens up and sends everybody to you. Yeah. So that's what basically happened. So it started with the, with my mom and that wacky woman that used to come over <laughs> and then it was a friend in my teens and then it was Sonia and then it was this person and yeah it took off <laughs> okay um now would you say that you uh, a lot of what you learned came from uh books or should I say what books inspired you what magical books inspired you to be honest it wasn't, it wasn't books that inspired me until I hit my 30s, because a lot of what I was taught was taught by beautiful women. It was passed down. It, mm. it didn't come from books. Right. Um, and I needed 
I learned everything I needed to know from, you know, astral uh, plane and having your body so light that you would just almost float. So a lot, most of what I learned was from women, but me being a curious and, and, and I love to read and I love to, once I like a subject, I want to know everything about it. So once I had that knowledge, I wanted to explore who else out there was feeling and doing what I was doing. Cause I always felt like the odd one, the different one, you know? Right. As, as many of us do on, you know, right. our magicians and spiritualists, we all tend to feel isolated <clears throat> right. you know, from the outside world. Absolutely. I, I sometimes still do. Yeah, I get. Yeah, still. <laughs> so how would you describe your magical style? That's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be quite honest, Going back to the books, I do want to, I do want to point out uh, Raven Grimenzi, if you've heard of him. Okay. Gr Grimassi, I'm sorry if I apologize if I've said that yeah. wrong. I'm Italian, I should know better. Um, <laughs> my magical style is, hmm. It's very private, so it's um, it's very hard to talk about. It's um, I would say it is unlike anybody else's. I, I shouldn't say it's unlike anybody else's, but I hear many magical people. I I want to be a green witch, and I want to stick to this, and I want to stick to that. That is not me. I have I have an open link to the world. So I can go very old traditional, I can go tribal, I can go voodoo. Um, it's whatever inspires me, dark and light. I'm pretty much open to a lot of what this practice has to offer. I don't, and, and herbs and potions, and uh, I don't stick to uh, to one thing. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, that that kind of um, stifles us in a way. It keeps us in one place. It doesn't teach us to really uh, get out there and uh, be in touch with the gods, um, to be as open spiritually as you possibly can mm -hmm. when you, yeah. So it's it's everything. I'm telling you, it's it's everything. It's yeah, I, blood, I, it's I, blood I, magic. It's it's everything you can imagine. <laughs> Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with you because, you know, I, I don't think that learning as a magician uh, never stops. It, it, um, absolutely. Yes. You know, once yes. you're done, once you, you know, know a lot about one subject, you go to the next, go to the next. And there's always, right, for it to come back and learn. Right. I never stop. I never stop reading. I never stop learning. And um, there's no way I could. I could say oh, I want to be this and and stick to that. That would be, yeah. You're not getting in your in your um, in your purest form when you confine yourself to one. You know, mm. the only thing that I stay away from would be Wicca. To okay. me, it's too organized. Uh, it's too much like a religion. Too many rules. This is not what this. This magic is about. There are no rules. Mm -hmm. Very interesting take. Um, now, I did notice that you are into potions, as you mentioned earlier. Yes. Um, now, what would you say is the most common mistake people make when making magical potions? Um, I don't know. I would... Uh, I would probably say not knowing your plants, putting anything together. Like I've worked with, um, oh my goodness, what's that called? Oh God, Belladonna. Okay. I've worked with um, grave dirt. 
So you have to know, like people think herbs, oh, it's herb, it's safe. Not so. So you've got to know your plants because you can work with belladonna, but don't scratch your eye or put your fingers in your mouth afterwards because it's poisonous. So, I mean, I think the common mistake would be know the plants you're working with. Just don't throw them all in a pot and respect them. Give thanks to everything you do. Uh, give thanks to it before and after you're done. And put your intention in it. A lot of your intention. I hear a lot of new beginners say, I don't want to do magic when I'm angry. I don't want to do magic when I'm not feeling good. Well, let me tell you something. The best magic is when you're pissed off. <laughs> yeah. All that. You know? All that energy is flowing through you. It's got to go somewhere. <laughs> right? Don't keep it inside. <laughs> no. So again, they're conforming to these rules, which is, I don't know. They're still getting them from society. I can't do this then. And it was interesting because just two days ago, there was a chat room. And the girl was saying, no, 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 you're only supposed to use your menstrual blood for fertility. And I wrote back, no, 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 <laughs> not so, <laughs> you know, so yeah, there's no limitations. And uh, don't try to tell others you're only supposed to use this herb for this. And you're only supposed to use this herb for that. You use what you feel what the gods tell you, what you feel at the moment you want to use, that's what you use. Yeah. And, and that applies not just, you know, with herbs or potions that applies with a lot of things like take, for instance, divination, you know, right. like say tarot card. Reading. Okay. You can't say everybody has to read them this way or interpret them this way. Everybody has their own way of doing. It. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> oh yeah. I mean, um, I use the wand, like I, I just, even behind me, there's, we still are, I'm sure you feel the same way. We're still a little weary of what we share because we've been ridiculed, but I mean, um, yeah, I mean, a, a, an anthem, a, anything, anything, as long as you're not, uh, you know, Yeah, sacrificing things that you know nothing about, then it's mm -hmm. pretty much anything goes, right? I, yeah. I do want to say the animal, the animal blood thing is uh to me, I love, love animals. And the only thing that I would say is never you're gonna piss, you're gonna piss gods off if you do it and you're not using the whole animal. So if you do it you better use it first for for food purposes mm -hmm. um before you use the blood of any animal you don't just use it just like you know what i'm trying to say you, yeah. you don't use that just for the heck of it mm -hmm. i agree with you yeah i know oh. that shadow wolf walker had talked about that and he does the right thing uh -huh. he uses the whole chicken <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> So uh, now I had uh, noticed that you make um, potions on the subject of potions. You make uh, love potions now. All kinds. Yes. All kinds. Yeah. But when it comes, let's, let's talk about uh, the subject of love spells. Now, what's your take on love spells? Because some people say, well, you know, I don't do love spells because it wears off and It'll come back. It'll, it'll come back at you, and some people just stay away from that area. What's your take on love spells? Um, you don't want to. If somebody comes to me and says, "I want this person to be obsessed with me. I want this person to desire me," I'm like, hands off. Um, if you come to me and you say. I want this love potion, but I'm, I'm going to work on my marriage or this relationship. I'm going to do my part. I just give it a little kick. Then I'll do it. 
but it has to have, first of all, it has to have the person's permission. And with any work, you have to do your due deal, like your part. Mm-hmm. It's if you want a job, you can't sit at home and do nothing and do spells all day and never leave your door. Right. You're not going to have that job come to you. That's not the way it works. So you want me to do a love potion? That's fine. I will do it with all my heart, all my power, but you also have to do your, your part. And I think that's where a lot of people get mistaken. Oh, a spell is going to fix everything. No, it's not. You've got to have your share in it as well as the person who's doing it for you. Yeah, a lot. And, and also a lot of people just try to force somebody else to notice them or to like them. Right. Right. That's that's not going to work. Yeah. No. I mean, you know, maybe it might work for a little bit, but it's going to wear off and you constantly got to keep putting that on. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, that's a waste of energy. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I just thought I would touch on that because that's a that's a subject that a lot of people tend to argue about, you know. But What do so, they argue about? Yeah, exactly. Just to, as they, they say, well, back they just want to, they, they just want to stay away from the subject altogether because they say it's not right. But the way that you had put it to where you have the person's permission and mm-hmm. they're going to do their part working on marriage or relationship. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can see that. Work. Yes, that, that does work. I know for a fact. <laughs> yeah. Right. And again, I go back to the job interview. You can't do 50 spells in your house. Please give me a job. And you don't go for one interview. How is that going to work for you? <laughs> yeah. Right? It, it, so, yeah, it makes no sense at all. No. It's lazy is what it is. A person just doesn't right. want to do that. Right. Um, now, what herb would you say that you're drawn to the most? Patchouli. Um, golden seal for some reason. Mm-hmm. And um, I never pronounce this right in English. <laughs> Kagoma. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. We used to have a different, we, we, we had a different word for it in Italian. That I'm very drawn to. That has many, many purposes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, uh, I guess, what I feel in the moment, you know, mm-hmm. whatever but, herb inspires me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if some people, it tends to change depending on their need, you know, they'll be fascinated right. with it for so many months or years and they'll go to something else. Right. Well, February is the month of love. So you should try to do, you know, the colors and herbs associated with that month. Mm-hmm. So, a lot of months have certain, I don't want to say rules to them, but have certain energies. Um, yes, yes. But you're not constricted to use just because a book says, you know, February is the month of love. Doesn't right. mean you can't do a love spell in March and April. <laughs> and that's where you find your power when you say, I'm going to do, I'm open to the universe. And I'm going to, I'm going to do it all. Mm-hmm. Now, um, I noticed that in some of, uh, some of your videos you posted on your Instagram, uh, there's a storm going on outside. So <laughs> would you say that you tend to use the weather to give your magic or your spell an extra kick? Oh yeah. The weather and the moon. <laughs> yeah. And I love, love to do spells in thunder. Oh, yes. I hate the snow. I struggle with it. But uh, thunder, not rain, thunder. Um, or or uh, full moons or the new moon coming into the full moon. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think the storm also represents a storm, I think, in all of us. That's brewing sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. whatever it is, somebody pisses us, pisses us off at work or mm-hmm. just doesn't get it or understand. So I always embrace the dark and the light, not just one. 
because then I feel you're out of balance as well. And that's that I that I think is where some practitioners go wrong. I'm going to do it all this way. Balance is essential. You need a positive charge and a negative charge in order for exactly. your battery to work because you are a battery. That's right. And if one night you want to like negative, 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 yeah. <laughs> do the negative, like do it with all your might, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, but don't, don't spend the rest of your life just doing negative because a negative and a negative is going to get you negative, nothing positive. Good advice. Now, are there any uh, herbal magic books that you recommend? Um, oh God, I have a whole whack of them behind me hmm let me see here oh i have too many here <laughs> um there's this one modern witch's spell book the modern witch's spell book yeah is there any books i would recommend for spells you mean like for for herbs, if someone someone's getting started herbs, I would recommend anything that says beginners, mm -hmm. beginners, yeah, anything with beginners herbs. Start with that. Once now, you get advanced, then you can w work your way up, kind of. Now, is there any other advice that you would give to someone who wants to get started in herbal magic? Or just magic in general. Um, yeah. The advice that I have given, because I was on another channel, and I find that a lot of people do not take this, is educate yourself. Knowledge is power. You cannot dive into something without knowing what the hell you're doing. Yeah. So... I mean, I had a girl actually tonight, she was unsure of what kind of witch she wanted to be. The best advice is start from the beginning. If it wasn't something that was in you or that you felt as a little girl, pick up a beginner's book, just read. I would say read and study for about one year before you practice anything. Because I hear a lot of practitioners say, I just want to dive in and I want to do spells. Well, it doesn't work like that. You have to have to know what you're dealing with. If you want to be lazy and you don't want to read, then the consequences are yours, <laughs> mm -hmm. so to speak. Just educate yeah. yourself. Just read, read, read. Yeah, I agree. Um, now, tell us a bit about, you have a Facebook group. It's called Spells spirituality and potions tell us a bit about I just that. i just started it <laughs> yeah i noticed um okay so it's basically a little bit of what we talked about i'm gonna have videos on there to show you what i'm mixing together how to make a certain potion i'm actually gonna have uh chat forums for people who want to ask questions um, I'm going to be available for anybody who is struggling or has any kind of problem. Um, just little things that I'm selling, just kind of teaching. I want to be more of a teacher for people on this forum, which has not started yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I'm in that group. Uh, you sent me an invite. Yes. Thank you. Browse. Yeah. You're welcome. I started browsing around so far. I'm impressed. So I'm looking forward to see what other content you bring. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it's only two days old. <laughs> yeah, but it's good stuff. Um, you're also on Instagram. Are yes. you on TikTok also? Um, I try, <clears throat> excuse me, I try to steer away from TikTok. Like if you have something, I'll yeah. join it to support you 100%. Um, I try to stay away from TikTok only because it's gotten a bad rap that um, I don't know if what I'm seeing is true. Right. There is a lot so, of BS. Right. So I really I, I really don't want to do the TikTok. Facebook, 
and yeah. Instagram is okay. Although I hate the politics of Facebook. Yeah. Um, I wish we could put them out of business. Oops. Can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it, so everybody who's watching, um, check the uh, video description below the video. Uh, you'll have a link to her Instagram and to her Facebook group. And uh, so uh, Jesse James Ardia, it's been great talking with you. Thank you, Alfredo. Thank you. Martinez, yes. right? Yes, Martinez. That's yes. a nice Irish name. <laughs> Irish name, yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Thank you, honey. Watching. It's been great. <laughs> You're welcome. Everybody watching, like and subscribe to Dark Sorcery. Bye.